Yes, people. If I could go far Greetings, blessings, welcome once again. Bringing your lights up. You're locked into yours truly, DJ Cat the Catalyst. We're live and direct. Right here on Instagram. And of course, I'm gonna be going live with Jana Fix. More love, light and blessings. Do I like tough drinks? Jump up and skip a clip and make it fantastic. This one is from the Greek project. Get my way, I'll cook and clean all day. Vintage reggae. It is your wish, I'll wash up dirty sheets. And if I. Yes, big up everybody passing through. I see the fire coming through. Yes, Sinati, Rasayota. KSR, big up south. Each and every time. Hey. <laughs> greetings, greetings. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> you know what? I was rocking and grooving to the tune. I didn't want it to stop. <laughs> nice vibes. <laughs> Every time. So you know what, John FX, tell the listeners, tell the people a little bit about yourself and of course who you are. Okay, my name is John FX. Um John Crawford, real name. Um, I'm this producer from, I'm from Jamaica for years. I've had some international success and I just did an album and just, you know, the album having some love and, you know, I give thanks to the Almighty for the love that I've been receiving, you know, give thanks. I hear that hundred percent. You know what, the way you say it, make it sound so easy. And I know for a fact it wasn't that easy. <laughs> so I want to, I want to know your journey. I want to know kind of. How did you get to where you are now? How did it all begin? All right. So I'm a drummer from Jamaica. Um, I was a kid musician, you know what I mean? I grew up in a church, um, Toil Missionary Church in Wattles. Yeah. That's a church I would go to a lot. My dad was like an elder deacon. My mom was like Christian head director. And um, there was always music instruments. Our house is in Portmore. So yeah. the, era, the era is like a bad era. So they would store the equipment in our house in Portmore, right? So I have all these instruments around. I think I start I start playing the piano at three. That's what I could remember. My yeah. mom could re my mom could recant me playing drums, pans and stuff, like at 18 months, 16 months. She always talk about it. I don't remember it, you know? So yeah. the, um so I start playing piano for a while, um, just at the house playing, playing, playing. Eventually the church had a few organ players. I didn't have any drummers or anything like that. So there was a drum set, but I've been practicing at home, you know? Yeah. So I started playing the drum at the church professionally at like age nine, you know what I mean? And then because all the missionary churches are connected, I used to play for Waterford Missionary in Portmore. I used to play for Portmore Missionary. I used to play for Grace Missionary. And then I started playing for Power Faith. That's a big church, you know? So yeah. I started playing for them. I was like 11. Then I said to my dad, hey, I want to go to a studio. I want to go to a Christian studio. I like were Christian people, so I'm thinking I'm going to go to a Christian studio. So my yeah. father said, well, the gospel studios, I didn't know, they're kind of a little busy, you know? So he's going to take me to the Rasta studio, Caveman studio. Yeah. That's yeah. where I get the things. My dad, it was a risk for him to um, take, you know? Mm -hmm. But he said, he's going to take me to the Rasta studio. And I went to the Rasta studio. And he gave me some rules, you know? He said, no weed smoking, you know, you know come to me with no, none of that stuff, you know what I mean? So yeah. I decided to abide by those rules. I still don't smoke to this day, you know? So yeah. <laughs> being, a, being a caveman now, I was just there sitting very quietly and caveman took a liking to me because I wasn't a talkative young guy. I was very yeah. quiet and things. So they didn't really know what I could do. They thought I wanted to be an engineer or something like that. So Half Pint um, was always there. Half Pint. So caveman is the studio where the rasters come from. That's the original studio. Sizzla Boss at Caveman. Luciana, yeah. Nene. Keep it name. So the caveman sound is what they were DJ on. So that's the original place where most of the Nazi then come from. Yeah. So now 
half my two saw is, you know, come by and stuff. And it's a big artist. So the big artist, I get extra quiet when I see them, you know. So half of them, <laughs> yeah. there's a record name, Madonna, that they play. Madonna, Madonna, Madonna. But the keyboard is like, wasn't around. But because I played like, like, like 10 instruments at the time, I did it, let them know. So I started playing for the, for the Madonna record. So I that, check Madonna, check Madonna, check Madonna, pop, 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 pop. I played all the stuff. So they were like, blown away. <laughs> so half part of me became like good, good, good friend. Like he would drop me home every day, you know, pick me up, drop me to school and thing, you know. So then yeah. started rocking with him. I leave Arden and then I go to Heidel. I work with a youth named Scuba. I make a track for Scuba. Um, it's my first record, 1999. Blessed love to you. So we press the CD and the stamper at Anchor. I go to Clark. I save my lunch money you know, and I press it. You know, I met Gary G and a bunch of people there. You know, so when I did that, you no, know, 1999, 2000, the record, that's like a CD thing, you know, a company mm -hmm. named Young Blood, and then we moved to America. When I was moving to America, you no, know, Caveman and some guys at Caveman gave me some addresses yeah. go, in Brooklyn. So one of the addresses was Keelan Beckford, Brooklyn, Schenectady, St. John. Another address was um, uh, Sir Tommy's. Another one was Bonnie Rerun. And another one is Jalite. And another one is Dan Juan. So <laughs> when I go by Dan Juan Studio, you know, Dan Juan Studio have like the plucky ranks and the sluggy ranks and the, you know, Mikey Jarrett there outside, you know. So yeah. when Dan Juan asked me who am I and where I come from, at the time, Portman wasn't you know, nothing that nobody talked about. You know, it wasn't no body area. It was just like a little place that people live. So yeah. I didn't tell them I come from Portman. I used the Waterhouse thing instead. I said, yeah, I come from Waterhouse, you know. <laughs> And that man said, no, 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 we don't want no more bad man around here. <laughs> so, <laughs> later on, he's the one who mastered gun session for me later on. And he yeah. said he was glad that he never kept me around it. And he never wanted me broke out, you know? So mm -hmm. I eventually went to Jalai. Jalai, no. Okay. Jalai, no, is the one who gave me a, um, give me a job to do. Because mm -hmm. them time the Pro Tools just come out. Jalai was the first Pro Tools to do in the entire reggae Brooklyn, New York thing. Before 8 and for everybody. So Jalai had this Pro Tools system, he wanted to master songs that, um, mm -hmm. like some songs that he had, which would be like um, Carter Livingston, Andre Veta Kali, you know, big up Jalai, Dreddy, yeah. you know, <laughs> Deadly Dragon. So what happens is, Kali Weed, um, Bounty Hunter, I'm only yeah. coming from the show, Barton Levy, Bounty Hunter album, Sister Carol, Ski and Success. So he wanted me to take them from record and clean them up. So if mm. you hear like murderer on the yeah. um, thing, the murderer you hear on digital platform, chances are mastered by me. You know, and all those records. Then you hear them on a streaming or a CD or something like that. So Jalai, give me that bus. Yeah. Time. 2001, 2002, 2003, I meet a youth named Danger on the bus. Danger yeah. introduced me to Renzi and then Obsession. So Obsession had a remix. Sizzler, solid as a rock, they just can't stop me, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I ain't never scared. Yeah. So, I remixed, um, Obsession did that by himself, and you know, big up Jatte. So, what mm -hmm. happens is now, Obsession did that, I link up with him, and 2004 now, a youth named Ruben Stoddard, boss, an American idol. It's like a Mr. Shot, it's like a drop the bomb, damn, I'm sorry. So, we decided to do a reggae remix of that, because I tell him that. I want to show him that we're gonna what we're, our remixes is making original tracks yeah. around the sounds. So I did a wicked reggae rhythm. Like a Mr. Shot. But Ruben stood up. They loved it. And the whole Brooklyn mashup them time. Yeah. Then Mario had a record now. You should let me love you. So I did a remix to that too, original drum track. Yo, big up Jamie. So now that remix run the whole of Brooklyn one one radio and the black 97 and blah blah blah. No. It kind of young Jeezy drop a record. It kind of young Jeezy trying to take it easy. Right? So we yeah. got the vocals and Obsession didn't know it kind of ready from a while. So because I'm like, like, I didn't have green card and stuff. It mm. can give us a new drop. That goes testing one, two, three. It can the legal area. Right? So yeah. that's that good intro. I always had a link with Sizzler from Jamaica days. So I had this Sizzler record. Don't you fret for me. Cartel decided to go up to New York. Big up, big up, um, Zion, big up, big up, respect, yeah. respect, you know what I mean? So Cartel goes to New York, Tech Nine bring him to do a dub plate, you know what I mean? Big up Kelly. 
big up to do a dub plate at Obsession Studio. So if you listen yeah. to the Obsession, the gun session, it says Obsession FX, that's me, yeah. Tech. Run sessions, the tech is DJ Tech Nine, right? <laughs> so when they voiced that, I wasn't there. I was in Florida, you know what I mean? So Obsession, you know, big him up for making cartel call my name in the song, you know? So then yeah. the Shabba Ranks now is a dub plate. We we'll get Jack Creation, you know? We find an acapella, you know what I mean? I was splicing yeah. the bubbles, get chop up, fire, fire on, and those are curse words. So I had to put gunshots in it. Yeah. But, so that yeah. remix, that remix said, was, hey, kind of young Jesus, trying to take it easy. Only way to, and it, no, no, testing one, two, three. Hey, kind of illegal alien, it was Sizzler. Yeah, Sizzler, like, come on, you coming to live and shove up. You yeah, yeah. And then Carter just saw me and said, you know, it's Cartel, Obsession, FX, Tech. Run session. Stop it with me. Hey, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> that run the whole group yeah. The record, yeah. The record debuted on the Parkway, in the Eastern Parkway thing. Two million people. That's where the record debuted. So Mr. C called up session personally and said, yo, I'm coming to Brooklyn. I'm going to get that record. I need that record. Mr. C gets the record. Puts it not on the playlist, not on the, the mix shows. He put it on the playlist. So the record play like a real record. At 97 took it down, 105 took it down, I Art Radio took it down, Z100 took it down, Y100 took it down, it was a smash. So that's 2005, 6, 6, 7. Yeah. Um, to the shower ranks thing got so big, we had a sit down with Def Jam where they were like, if we could get Shabba to sign to Def Jam. So we went there now, we needed some records. So Shabba gave us yeah. two a cappella. So if you listen to the Cloud Nine, you hear a verse where it says, um, small ship gallon, give them the great <coughs> bossy sweet to make up. That's one of those vocals, uh, right? Okay, <laughs> I, 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 I obsession when obsession go to sleep. I was trying to figure out what we'll death jam in the morning, but I'll have is a gun session. We'll have yeah. these two acapellas so we can make some original record. So, another record that we had with Shower said, They block a slap, you know, to stop what it, but when I release them, out, they can't get up. But, but that song don't come out yet, we still have it to this day. So <laughs> Um, Shabba got the okay for us to release it. But then I took the vocals. I was watching our senior hall at a throwback on BT late in the yeah. night. And they had Mr. Lama Man, Shabba, it's Mr. Lama. Shabba was performing. So then I was yeah. like, hmm, I'm going to make a beat like that. So now I make that beat, my shit, get them, them the beats, <clears throat> but it's sweet and she's coming up on me. Then I have a vocal with Sean Paul from Jamaica with Fiona yeah. that I get from Snow Cone. So it goes, baby, I'll be right by your side. And Shabba Shab Shab coming, do you do you have play, baby girl? So I did that record, put Shabba on it, and then yeah. eventually, I think the 90s man, they love the rhythm so much. You know what I mean? So the 90s, them now decide to, yo, I'm a voice the rhythm, you know? So they go to Jamaica, you know what I mean? And yeah. them put uh, Peter, you know what I mean? Is their virgin. So fire Peter, go to Jamaica, voice Egyptian. And get, I can tell you, thing. and get the book of life, the book of life, and get the fire king on it, and the uh, Vasco mix too. You know what I mean? So then, yeah. if you listen back to the Shabba now and the Shampa, you will hear a verse. When Shabba doing thing, you hear a verse. We go, um, eat to the Irish, the Gallery will always slip back from my mind. The mini So they put Europe on that. And he had the clipper fingers at the time, 2006. So 2006, that's record, that whole Club Nine. I can feel the is the first credit I got, which wasn't a remix credit, like a real official produced by Johnny Fitz thing, you know? So then I'm really grateful for that. Um, Neil decided at VP to make the album the title track for Egyptian's album called I Can Feel the Pain. And then yes. the rhythm was mixed very well by Banzai Caruso. Big up to Banzai, couple of Grammy well. And Banzai mixed jam rock at the time, so I wanted that professional sound. So when Banzai mix it now, VP also put out I Wayne album and made the title track called Book of Life. And that, yeah. that really shoots a lot of stuff for me, you know what I mean? I really, you know what I mean? I give thanks for it. You're big up, Kelly. And um, because of that now, that put me as a producer now. I'm no longer this remix, remix guy. Now, yeah. 2007, 8, that's I Can Feel a Pain album came out 2008. 2009, Some of Egyptian. 2010, Holy Record. <laughs> go smash, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole yeah. record goes smash now. VP, um, I think they decided, I think they decided that they were just gonna just 
compile some songs together and put it out like they take beautiful lady and then my i can see the thing and then neil diamond was like yo i think we should do an album man like we don't have the time we don't have the time for it and neil says man, yeah. i think fx could not be so like a couple of days because he's really fast like a week you know yeah so neil flew down to florida now i'm mixing now the studio the gilly studio and we did the egyptian album your big up printer so we did the egyptian album over there and i did it in about three days you know what I mean? All of us sick. Me get all the stomach. Neil vomit. It's like Egyptian feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we did it. And after yeah. that album came some good solid tracks. And the Nalik was a smash from that album. Say she nah, nah, nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's 2011, 2012. Nalik was still running the place. 2013, I get a little hiatus. You know what I mean? I get to meet so big. Um, the Cecil Barker here in South, in South Florida, he produced Unconditional Love, that's his label, Jack Cure. Um, the next one, every time I'm here, I call him it, so you know. So I yeah. start working with him at his studio, and I did a CC album with him. Um, did a couple of things there, and it was me just running through. There's a lot of readings I did, I did turn the ball reading in the meantime. Oh, man, why can't call me the baby? That's what I do in uh, cartel. I did a bunch of bunch of readings during yeah. the time, but. Most of the stuff that I didn't release as my company labels, I don't even talk about it. Yeah. But I did a whole bunch of reading them time. I turned about I really want to for reading. <laughs> um, so that was that. Then now, 2013, 14, I mean, so big, I put out a CC album card still running. That did pretty well. 2015, 2016, 2017, I decided to uh, put out a sizzler album I have. I'm yours. Yeah. And she, yeah, you that you get on it. So this is now me becoming a producer now. So over the years, yeah. I was a beat maker. I must admit, there's a difference with a beat maker and a producer. Yeah. Many yeah. producers today are not gonna admit that they are still beat makers. I can tell you, I was a beat maker, okay. right? Because then the production hat that you wear is a yeah. total different thing. You know what I mean? Big up Sidon, you know, big up Swan. <laughs> so what happened is now, I am. Um, Decided that that's what I'm going to do. Put up the Sizzler album, I'm yours. Um, I had to do artwork now. I had to think about getting it mixed, getting it promoted, pressing yeah. records, pressing final, distributing it. That's the hat yeah. a producer yeah. were and, and an executive. So we put up the Sizzler album 2017. I did some records. I, I, I distributed it to um, my boy down here, David Diaz in South Florida, uh, VP. So he got it out to the world. The records finished like in a week you know this is the album he yeah. entered number two on the billboard my wow. music group label no major label behind it yeah. and that was a big thing for me got a grand 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 consideration at the time too and um, mm. really something i was humbled by while doing the sizzler album extension comes by the studio he had a record that andre did mix at um art house media studio so andre yeah. mixed the look at me and look at me was already running up on SoundCloud. So then he had a song called Jason Flores. And I think this is the plaque I have here yeah, too. So the Jason Flores plaque, Jason Flores sound was a calm sound that he wanted to do. So I get to know him a little bit. Yo, big up Tommy. I, I got to know him a little bit. Um, I recorded the Jason Flores for him. And then he said yeah. he wanted it to be mixed and mastered the same day. I'm like, no, my, you know, I'm credited as mixing engineer. This record is platinum. It's not eight time platinum now, but this is what it was a single platinum, you know? And um, I said, man, all right, I'm going to do the mix that I can do to it. And then I'm going to take it to Cohen. So Cohen Helden is, the, is the guy that I made. He mixed, Cohen mixed a Sizzler album for me. I think he's, okay. he's Swedish, I think. Swedish, yeah. Well, he's an American now. So big up to Cohen Helden. So Cohen now mastered the. Uh, the Jason Flores and all that stuff. That record went platinum in like a week. Real platinum, not the crazy stuff we know now. So when the record went like that now, me and him developed a good relationship. So I started to record all his songs. Yo, big up Esco. I, I yeah. started to record all his songs and mix them and teach him about life and books and reading and you know, a couple of other things. You know, more like as a little like it's this age of my son, you know. You know, my son is about yeah. the same age, so it's like, still, he's a brilliant young man, but I'm you know, still a youth that's still learning and searching the same way. I give thanks for that. So then, 2018 comes in, he gets a deal, 
with um, Caroline Capital Records, you know, big check cut and everything, everybody nice, you know. And yes. um, he gives me songs instead of like studio time. So he gave me royalty. The record you record see with Cartel and X Tentation and Step London and Kimani Mali. Royalty, yeah. you know, my bloodline. Give me, that was one of them. Give me the uh, girl with more father. Girl with more the internet. Give me that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? As my own record. And he also gave me a record called Arm Journey, which I never released yet at the time. 2018 March, the deal goes February, April, May, June. He passes away in June. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now you rest in peace, you know? Pass away in June. Mm -hmm. I'm like, boy, channel star. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gandhi. So, British, big up. That's my best friend, you know? So, Bless yeah, man. So, what happens is they um, he pass away. Around that time, you know, kind of everybody was kind of sunk in. I got sworn in as Grammy governor actually the same day that they had yeah. viewing at the Panther Stadium. So it was a, like, a, you know, I mean, the Almighty will give you something that, you know, that, that's how the universe yeah. works, you know? So it was just yeah. a time. It was, I wasn't excited. I wasn't sad. I wasn't happy. I was just neutral, you know? Just giving time yeah. and understanding. The process, you know what I mean? I said, Why well, I might you know? Big up Sir Optan in the legend. So now after that, that happened now, me and his mom we get through the team, we delicate with the whole time. We just get the business done and everything organized. About October now, label start hunting yeah. for his stuff. Yeah. So one of brothers decide that they want some of his stuff. So I have a couple of these things. I gave his mom a few other records back, you know? Yeah. But then I said, I'm you, I'm going to give it to the one. I'm drawing you, end up, the label put on, Lil Pump on it, Maluma, I got Maluma on it, Sway, I'm drawing you, say, I'm a man, let me hold you. Record go platinum in a month, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that yeah. became my first platinum record as a producer, not as a nice. musician, an engineer, as a producer, yeah. I'm drawing you. So the record was released 2018, and it went platinum in May, around the same time. And you know, my birthday month this one. So it went platinum around the same time, 2019. And I was like, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So 2019, 2020, I get a link to Cartel. And yo, FX, you need to link up, blah, 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 blah. I put up the Dance and Diva album with him. Uh, cute rider. Ever since I met you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was a good little time, 2021. I get this honorary doctorate from a university, you know what I mean? Honorary musical doc um, doctorate. 2022, I get my first Grammy nomination of Jesse Royal's album. I uh, was credited for Natty Dread. Yeah. You know what I mean? I fight, still love Natty Dread. I played live bass on it. Sean Alric actually produced the track. You know yeah. what I mean? Big up to Sean for that. You know what I mean? Man, Big up to yeah. Rapid. So what happens is now, but that happened with that time, 2022, and I went to the Grammys. I, I knew the rules of the Grammys. We still have a yeah. hope that we could have one, but I already know that the category is 51% reggae. Oh. So uh, the world don't really consider the dancehall or reggaeton or dancehall trap as reggae, reggae. Reggae is considered yeah. ten, ten, ten guitar drum bass, you know what I mean? And also, mm. when I went to the Grammys, I would um, I would sit there and I would see they would give like a, a Hawaiian, like a Hawaiian yeah. award, and the guy that come there come with him a Hawaiian thing on his neck, and his album is of the culture of Hawaii with the with the ukulele and the stuff. So yes. we want to always try to give the purest of the genre, not what we would think, you know. So. When the soldier with everybody upset, but I look and I say, but the album is a hundred percent reggae. Tick, ting, 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 you know. Yeah. Like, okay, all right. So I said, well, I was I was planning to do this vintage reggae album. So that's twenty twenty two. So twenty twenty three. My idea for this vintage reggae album was I was gonna just make the rhythm because I have these rhythms. You know, I have rhythms like this all the time. But I didn't make it yeah. this feel of that time. Had the idea in my head because yeah. I knew I knew what Coxon did to get the bass. I know he might be speak up. I knew what Ducre did to get the drum, and I knew how they play the organs and the keys, and I knew what they did for the guitars. They're like Coxon Studio One and Treasure Isle combined. I was just trying to find the artist 
to do it. You know what I mean? Like say, yo, let's just do this and then it's a good reggae album. But then yeah. a lot of the artists I know, um, the big one, they're busy. That's one. Mm. And I didn't have a studio ready yet to have them sit in and go through the things. So I'm going to do some demos. Yeah. So I go, if I could have this girl, you know, I'm hoping to give it to somebody else. And it take the train to meet me all in the rain. Hoping to give it to somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> because the year before that, I released a retro dancehall album with Cartel. Cute right, I made yeah. it retro style. This is Signal, I made it like 90s, 80s. And I, it, like, it didn't even stick on the wall. I was like, hmm. And everybody trying to do this 90s, bad like 90s dance. So I was like, let me go way. And I'm going to go far back to Scott. Because yeah. I might not get everybody. But I know the sweet time of reggae is a rock steady time. You know what I mean? The yeah. you better live the love song time. You know, people really love it. Young people love it too. They yeah. say, oh, that reminds me of father music. So I decided that I'm going to do these songs. I recorded them in my car, by the way. Mm. Because I wanted to get the old sound. I don't want no studio padding and no fancy stuff. So I recorded yeah. it. And then again, the drums was a little bit hard for me to get because I have to make sure that you mic one mic with the drum. And I had a little old drum set in Brooklyn um, in my mm -hmm. mom's house. And I had a lot of drum samples from that. Because I was always knocking over old rhythms over the time. But then I said, my brother would say to me, why would you make over people's stuff? Can't my brother is a rast my brother not rasta but he have locks and beard and things like that. Yeah. Like almost like my twin brother, we're just one year apart. So I'm very rootsy and thing, you know. Mm. So I said, mm. you need to like get the inspiration what them man they did have and make it originally. They were as yeah. inspiration too. So you can get on that inspiration too and make some original tracks also too. You know what I mean? Yes, Kelly, come to the party, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the um the inspiration of that I decided that okay, no sampling and not singing on nobody's stuff. The only thing I did, if you listen to train, you would hear, wait until I saw the sun, don't know why I didn't come. So I go, take the train to meet me. Because it's a melody that I just borrow, you know what I mean? But for yeah. most of the album, it is it is original. And I have to admit it, because you know I'm not hiding it. You know, so the album is my way of saying, I know reggae is in a struggling time, so here it is. You know what I mean? Yo, Kel, big up, enough love. So I said, see it here. This is my version of what I think we should be going back here and starting back from here and moving forward. And for artists that come, they ask me for a track. I'll give, I can vintage fire any song. Yeah. Any silly day in any value and just give me the vocal and I can make a track, original track like that and say, see, it's not really the vocals to me that's killing the music, it's the production, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because a lot of artists are very skilled, they have a bunch of lyrics and stuff, but they just need better organization with the melodies yeah. and finding yeah. a chorus. They need a producer, not a mean maker who said, yes, my dog, that body, no. Like a producer that can be like, okay, this needs a guitar, I need harmonies here. You need intro. Yeah. You need a chorus. You need, you know what I mean? I need yeah. to mix. So when you complain, oh, grab it, them on fight with thing. Oh, you know, blah, blah. This thing not even mixed properly. You know what I mean? Mm. There's a category that calls best engineered in, them, in that world. You know? you know what I mean? Yeah. But because the category does exist. We can't fight it like it don't exist. It does exist. So we have to also know that that's also a level. We're mixing is very important and mastering also. So it's a, this album is a, is a template that I would present. Say, I, 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 we can follow this template if we want to see some better results. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really yeah. why. And it's fun. It was so much fun making it. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of it was touching to me, like the dance are nice again. Mm. Being in Waterhouse, I said something. Jungle and trench down. Don't have matches lean. Mama Kylie. There is a war. I hope you feel no pain. In Jamaica, there's a war in the 90s in yeah. Binz Road and Balcom Drive. Like 40 people died. I think like, like a week or a month. A big number, you know what I mean? Never went yeah. on the news. Never police couldn't come in there. And it was so touching for me. So I'm like, yo, imagine if that sound nice again. Rude boy, I skank again, yeah. 
much is a what can you hear me? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why it's like a hope. You know what I mean? And you're projecting that it can be nice again. So I said, yeah. when I check people like you, um, DJ Cat, you love, I think you clock out from dance all years ago. And there's many people that really love the culture so much. That's why you present this interview. And I'm grateful to be here on this platform. But I know you love reggae music, the real kind of song. I would want to yeah. see it. No, because the lick over my rhythm, we just be like, oh yeah, you lick over some rhythm. And then I want it to match the time. So it's not an easy thing to do, to match yeah. the feel and the time, because I have the reverbs and I have the sounds like um, tenor song, I think I said, sounds sweeter with an echo chamber. So I had to buy an echo chamber to mm. get this song, mm. you know what I mean? And yeah. it was also me just trying to present it. It was, a lot of it wasn't great technology. It was like voiced in like a concrete room. Mm. Like Motown mm. booth is a concrete room. Um, yeah. Jim, Jam, 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 King Jamie's studio is a concrete room. Is the booth in it. Because it have natural yeah. reverb that comes out the wall. That's why we all so good in our bathroom. You mm. know what I mean? Because that reverb, yeah. natural room reverb, you know? So mm. the album took me, it took me a week to complete the entire thing. I didn't write most of it. I freestyled it because um, a lot of the reggae people were just kind of just flowing. We got to live some life before we go. So I did the same thing with Miracle. It must have been a miracle. You know what I mean? Just sing yeah. until, because I have melodies all the time. Words is my little issue, you know? Yeah. So I, to, I sing melodies until words come in. And I learned that from, I call them the masters of recording. Um, Cartel is one of them. Egyptian is yeah. one of them. Yeah. Egyptian will go, he's mumbling for like 10 minutes. And then he goes, Let me make love to you. I want to talk to you. I want to I mention treat a lady. And he put words to the mumbling. Yeah. The cartel does the same thing. Sutla does the same thing. You know, the masters of recording. They don't really write like that. They're mumbling until. And then if you think of Bob Dylan and rock and roll legends, a lot of their words don't make sense. Fleetwood Mac, because it's the groove that they were going with and the melody, and they'll just say something, you know, jumping George Flash, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's, I used that technique back then, because a lot of people were high. I don't smoke, I don't take mm. drugs. So I got to, like, get into, like, a high, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, just flow, no limit. By the time I finish it, because um, I was done with it, the album release, I started January 14th. Album yeah. release, February yeah. 6th. But because my distribution needed two weeks to send it to stores and stuff like that. But I was done in it long, long, long time. And I, I didn't want to keep overthinking and try to go get this guy to mix it and that guy to master it. And the artwork was another issue for me because I did the artwork myself. I had a, I had a Clark's artwork first. And I had yellow suit okay. and a Clark's and a mesh marina. And I was like, that yeah. is not the 50s and the 60s. That's maybe the 80s or the 90s. So I switched mm. again, you know what I mean, to this one. I saw a picture of Bob Marley and the Whalers when they were in the black and white back in the Sim Simadon day. You know? I, said, yeah. I said, I got some suits like that. I'm going to make the artwork with three of me to present. Because yeah. I did all the harmonies in the song, too, in all the songs. And I'm actually a harmony guy. Everybody in the studio knows me as a harmony guy. Okay. So it was that easy for me to, to do. But it was fun. And I wasn't going to put it up. But when I played for a few people, it's like, don't make nobody sing them over. You put them out. I was like, me? <laughs> They're like, yeah, you put it out. I was like, well, I'm not an artist. So that's what brought me here to Vintage Reggae, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Vintage so, yeah. What keeps you inspired? Because you've got so many accreditations, accolades. I mean, you've put out so many different tunes. Mm -hmm. And the list keeps going. But how do you keep that inspiration kind of keep flowing and current, you know? So what I've learned over the years is um money depressed people mm. so when i go remember i'm from caveman caveman is where yeah. when the artist is coming up that's where they come from and when okay. they're coming back down that's where they yeah. go back to so yeah. i hear a lot of crying over here whoa i'm gonna do the song they did rob me i'm gonna never get this i'm gonna never get that i don't like that kind of talking yeah. so when i was in brooklyn yeah. stuff was rough for me with the kids and the family and i live in my mom's basement I was tough, yeah. but I never talk about it. I never talk mm. about it. But I recognize that other than having health issues, we only really have money issues in it. 
when some yeah. say things is rough, you know, boy, things is rough on me right now. It's because you don't have any money. <laughs> so the thing is, if you move that out the way, because if you keep that going, you're going to make music only for money. Yeah. And then the inspiration of just doing it for fun goes away. You know what I mean? So I didn't want yeah. to become like that. I'm like 40 next week. And at this, from my 30s, I'm supposed to be like miserable when it comes to certain things. But I also yeah. had a break. I had some records yeah. that I also have accolades that people really don't have. So the Almighty preserved me. You know, it preserved mm -hmm. my, my, me also. To, I, I look much younger than I really look, you know. And it preserved me yeah. that I decided to remain being a child in the music. You know, mm -hmm. the great books say a child straight away. So you have to be a child yeah. to get inspiration too. And then my listening has never been, I never listened to reggae in Jamaica growing up, really. You know okay. what I mean? Maybe just Toots and Desmond Deck. And then I couldn't tell my friends in school that Ninja Man and being a bounty killer was the thing at the yeah. time. So I couldn't really tell them that I'm listening to these old people. But my musical taste was Neil Diamond in school. Abba. Mm -hmm. uh, Caveman, Rasta Caveman Studio. Caveman yeah. gave me an Abba. Vinyl. Okay. Voyage. Yeah. And vinyl. And I would blow it away, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. by listening to these different genres, there's just so much I want to do in music mm -hmm. that I haven't even done yet. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I do I do movie school, I do classical music too. And there's some stuff I haven't even done it. So I'm like, I can't wait to do another album. So the this fifties, sixties album inspired me. I also did the seventies, you know, which is coming out soon. I also did okay. the eighties and I did the nineties. And I was yeah. doing the two thousands now too. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So um Junior Radigan in um Baltimore suggested to me to do an anthology. Okay. A four okay. C D anthology. You remember that that history of reggae music C D? Yeah. Um back yeah. in the day. Like you know, Bob Marley the four box C D set. They had a history yeah. of Jamaican music. And I said, you know, I'm gonna do something like that. Mm -hmm. Um eventually I would turn some of these things into a rhythm. Like I could voice Barry Salmon and the train rhythm. I know uh, Runkus really liked the song. I made us make Runkus sing it too and thing and, and, and maybe put it out just to keep that. Like it does exist. We're still here. The world is still not ready music. Nothing is happening. You know, we're complaining that Afrobeats and stuff. Afrobeats must get a time because we were singing about back to Africa. So now our African brothers are getting a shine. Allow them to get mm. the thing. They're not taking anything from us. We must just do music. You know what I mean? Mm. We, we can't yeah. do trap dance all and not do one job. Are you crazy? You can't <laughs> compare that with the thing. So, I mean, the world still love it. Yeah. After anybody, a young, a young lady crying my hands from Bahamas two weeks ago in a club. Mm -hmm. Nice young lady. You know, she said, what happened to reggae? What happened to the, boot, the thing? And the, I was like, it's still there. If they just don't push it, you know, don't make it. Yeah. The popular people don't make it. You know what I mean? That's I don't know, there's a change in time. That's mm. You can't change and make it worse. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing that I am. Um, I said, let me do this thing. And for anybody out there that want, I'm here. I love vocals. Yeah. Tell me vocals. Yeah. I don't tracks like nothing. I don't, I don't charge nobody like that. You know what I mean? Come. Yeah. You know what I mean? I work with yeah. people, artists, cats, anybody. But it's just that. Um, and there's not, a, I don't have much ego over here. You know what mm. I mean? thing over here it's just you know i would prefer our people wouldn't come to me with it because our culture believes that confidence is ego you know what I mean? oh, okay and, yeah, the yeah. and they're getting it from the urban culture in hip-hop too because that's what they're about themselves yo i'm the baddest i'm the player y'all don't know me you know but it's humility is humility is true confidence you know but you have to you have to trust time to see yeah and that's what I did. Many, many times, I was sad. You know what I mean? And I was like, nobody knows who I am in our culture. And I, even my friends would say, like, dude, you make so much rhythm and you're still taking a dollar cab in Brooklyn, yeah? Yeah. And it, was, it, it, it knocked me sometimes, you know? But then I seen that over time, you still win. When the Almighty guide you, you still win. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have to trust the process too. You know what I mean? So that's what keeps me bubbling. You know what I mean? Put the that, yeah. that thing, put it to the side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. keep, keep creating. Don't worry about the past and what never worked and what never this and what you know what I mean. Leave that alone and keep moving forward with the music, you know? Okay. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent.
know, you speak of, you speak of I, I suppose, music and with so much passion. It's coming through the screen. <laughs> I love that. I love that. A hundred percent do love that. Yeah. So what's next for you? I mean, you spoke about all these great projects. Yeah. But what's, what can we expect? So I shot a music video this weekend for a song yes. called Uber, right? Yeah. So um, Uber is a piano, uh, like a ballad. It's not a Jamaican record. It's just it's a record I made for like Ed Sheeran and something like that, you know? Yeah. And I shot the video for it because I also know that um, I love my reggae, but I, I, I could tell if it's not supported, it hits a ceiling. You know what I mean? Mm, I can't yeah. really control the reggae ceiling. It's very funny. I could control mm. the world ceiling better than reggae. Okay. It's easy for me to hit in the world than to have a hit in the Jamaican world. Because what happens is, and it's almost like people, where the record is coming from, they will clamp down on it if it's not coming from something that they rate. So you want to that one, they link that one, you run it. You know what I mean? Mm. People will see it and deny it. Because Cloud9, I was struggling with the clown and with myself, you know. Nobody was okay. playing it, you know. It's the gangsters them coming up. And I say, hey, yo, I'm not going to play it. Yo, yeah, I say, man, FX, you say, you know. And it's, that's how the song mm -hmm. plays. A lot of DJs and stuff. There's a particular selector, big, big guy. And, you know what I mean, top, top radio. He said to me, say, FX, now to feel the like R&B really, you know. That's what he told me. When I, when I mm -hmm. play it, and I can feel the pain. And the, no, no, when I play it, I shout up, I shout up. And the era, and then played two other songs, and he wasn't feeling it. Mm. And the nineties man, them do so and got Jamaica and Peter them and give some people something. Yeah. And I seen it move, and I was like, huh. And this is why the, the, the music that we have sound this way because a lot of the, the producers today are like I call them beat buyers, right? Okay. Yeah, so they just buy up some beat, and it depends on how much money pull up them do and how much the street rate them, mm. how far this song will go. And that's a, okay. that's a tough, tough, tough thing to compete with when you're coming with quality music and things. So it's just like narrowed down to just one little thing. And when I went to Jamaica to do the interviews and ER and things, yeah, I mean, they took us to a place called Jerk 22. I mean, okay. wonderful bands. I saw you playing guitar solo for 30 minutes straight. In Jamaica, <laughs> a few months ago, so I recognize that it is still there. It don't go on nowhere. Yeah. Where. It's just, it's just what is being pushed. So my job is let me push this thing yeah. and try to get it as, as high as it can go. Because Jamaicans like to just follow a template. You know what I mean? Okay. It, it, in their brain, a lot of the artists, it's not that they're bad people. They just don't think that it's gonna be received. If they do it, because they don't want to lose a little fan base and thing, and people say that they water down. So they have to just, you know, the more, the stupider you are, is the quicker you move, even on social media. I could go yeah. viral tomorrow, take out my shirt, run and jump in a pool. I go crazy viral if I do some stupidness like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. keep, keep your standard is something where you might not be received very well. And even young ladies today, um, a young lady get a faster reception if you send her some naked pictures. In your inbox, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And yeah. if a woman that keeping her thing, she may never get a date because she's not willing mm -hmm. to be a, like that so quick, you know what I mean? So it's the yeah. same way that I see with the music. If you become a dummy and just don't care, you know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? Just naturally, you know what I mean? And the thing, but to keep the standard and to keep things going well, it's something that I have to at least hold the mantle for it, you know what I mean? So, hey, it's a reggae here. I don't yeah. know. So I, this is a new venture for me. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist thing because I've gotten people asking for dog plates, people asking for shows. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to do it. I have to do it. So I'll see what it will show the next step. The next step. There is a, um, a, a, a wisdom that they say you don't know where you're traveling in the night with your light yeah. showing you 10 yards. We could drive all the way from Florida to New York. Just see in the next 10 yards and the next 10 yards. You know what I mean? All the way up. So that's what I decided to do with life. I have some plans in my brain, but this okay. album, I didn't have a plan for this last year. So I said, no more plans for me. I'm just going <laughs> to flow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. Make, just be organic with it. Yes, yeah. Super organic. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. 
you know what? I feel like we should ask you to sing a little something for us. Whichever one you're feeling. Now, what do you reckon? Now go for, now go for my guitar. Now okay. Go for, now go for my guitar. Yep. Yes. yes, I want to big up everybody who's coming through. Big shout out to everyone. <laughs> This is my first time going to be singing any of these songs like this. Right, so. If I could have this girl, I'd give her everything. If I could have this girl, I'd go by a wedding ring. If I could go for it, I'd buy you anything. Give it to like simply make me up and be good. Oh, if I. People are sending you love hearts, sending you fire. They said they, they hear you loud and proud. They love the energy. Yeah, man, they love it. Give, the people love it. Give thanks, man. It's, it's a thing that we still exist. You know what I mean? I tell people that you can have hits and things. It's at the big level, at like the, the Billy Joel level and the thing. I've met these people a lot at, at awards and stuff, and they're super chill. And I'm like, yeah. come the people and don't have, to have so much ego. You know what I mean? You link a new diamond and an award or sitting beside um um Chris Stapleton at the Grammy. I'm beside Chris. You know what I mean? <laughs> Super t- yeah. Chris goes up for like a Grammy every second and come right back here beside me. You know what I mean? I'm super chill. And it's something that I'm like, man, you know what I mean? I I think we should should stick to that because that keeps you going. You know what I mean? Yeah. COVID was a thing that strike a chord with me you know, a lot because I've seen now where um, it humbled like everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. And one of the resurgence of a lot of reggae artists in South Florida is because Florida was the op- only open state. A lot of reggae artists don't make money off publishing. So you have to come mm-hmm. here to get shows and this and that and that. And then, you know what I mean? There's some successful music people, producers and stuff that live here, which I'm a part of that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people would admire that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it humbled, because I've seen the people that are here, I see them are taking on a more humbler kind of approach. But I remember when they were in their heyday, they were still, you know what I mean? A little tricky to deal with, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I think that people must now see successful people that are not bitter. You know what I mean? All right. yeah. And and yeah. still have um, big up cause, big up Marcia. That's my cousin. Yeah. So it's like you still yeah. have to have that kind of child personality where you're like, I'm not angry, I'm not bitter, and uh, I'm a, I'm a human being. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna do your interview and walk past you and not say good evening. So it's a thing that we need. That no, we have all of the other stuff. I know you need somebody that have a little bit more of a personality mm, and yeah. still have things. We talk to Sly, Sly, first in peace of Robbie. You read the Sly? Sly still, yeah. you, you still get excited over drum sounds. Big yeah. Sly Robbie, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You get a new drum sound and get a trap drum sound and super excited, can't wait to use it. Yeah. So yeah. That, those are the people that I admire. Uh, Max Martin, big American producer, like the biggest for all the Katy Perry all the stuff. Yeah. And they're still kids. Yeah in their mind, you know what I mean? In the thing. To keep that, you know? Yeah man. You look like you, you look like you wanna do another tune. Do you wanna drop another tune? No, I don't want to know words like I'm gonna sing a song I used to sing, but it's not my song. Oh. It's Bob Man's okay. song, but I used to sing it 
a lot, like, you know, by myself. I go, yeah. <laughs> because I wanted them to, you know, to be yeah. like an artist. So there's a time I used to travel with a guitar too. I had a big thick case. I could put clothes in the back of it and pick. Yeah. So that style would get me, it got me into first class once, right? Okay. And somebody said, who are you? Are you Andre 3000? Are you Lenny Kravitz? Are you wearing a locks with leather pants and you know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, no, I'm a reggae, I'm a reggae producer. Give us a song. Can we tell anybody about music and Jamaica a lot? They think you're artists. Yeah. So I'll sing this a lot, you know what I mean? This, this Bob Marley um, thing. I remember the four box CD that he yeah. had also had an impact on me. Because then I recognized that he had other people that he worked with, like um, Jad and, uh, you know, uh, um, Scratch Perry. That's Caveman's, yeah. uncle. That's Caveman's uncle, by the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he would work with that. And he had some other songs that like Guava Jelly that we're not even, we don't even know, you know what I mean? Like that, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So Guava Jelly was a big one. Um, um, the next one, go ahead and train. train to me. He says you are one of the greatest producers of all time. Big up, man. Russ, Fraser, big up, big up, big up, big up, brother, big up. Every, every time. <laughs> big up, brother, big up. Yes, sis. So that's it. Um, I tell people keep your passion. Yeah. Um, I did a, 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 a Grammy U conference as a speaker a few years back, and um, yes. there's children in the audience, and um, a lot of people when they talk at these awards, they would say. Oh, how did you make it? And this is, oh, I worked hard and perseverance and thing, you know? But that's not really very detailed. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like a standard thing. Yeah. So I told them in the audience that, hey, um, in order to be successful at music, you have to be amazing at it. Not good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of live singers that sing live in stuff and, and bands and stuff and you know, the cover bands, they're very good, but they're not mm. great. And what great, okay. great, great is something that you actually, it's not something you can even practice in. You know? Although you can be 10,000 mm. hours every day, it's almost like you have to be gifted with a tone. Mm. I mean, that tone that Bob have, or that tone, you know what I mean? That, you know, rasp. That, that, um, <laughs> this is the man, it's what I, James Brown. Yeah. It's a tone. I have to be gifted with, you know what I mean? So it's something where you sometimes were forcing, a lot of people I know, forcing music on themselves because they were doing it a long time. Yeah. Not because they've been doing it a long time, meaning that that's really what you're gifted at doing. You know what yeah. I mean? So I check myself a lot, you know. I said, am I supposed to be an entertainment attorney? <laughs> Am I supposed to be a, a, a public speaker? Yeah. Am I supposed to be a minister? You know what I mean? I check those things carefully. Yeah. But then music remind me that I, I, I don't really practice, you know, a lot of stuff and I've seen some good results from it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Big up to incredible the big engineer that you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a big, 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 big engineer right there. A lot of hits, 
You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of that, I mean, the future is always bright, you know, when you're around and it keeps on continuing, the future does. So what would you say to the next generation who do want to be a producer or in this music game? So I would tell them for music, you can't limit your sights, you know. My favorite era of music is the 20s. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eddie Ames, Perk Cuomo, um, Moon River, wider than a mile. That's my era of music actually and if you listen to i said train is me experimenting in genres because when i am um, when when the holy came out right it yeah. um it got, the holy have a thing those cards Yellow diamonds in the light. Uh, Rihanna. And he's standing side by uh, Adele. Hello yeah. from the other side. You know what I mean? So yeah. I recognize that these cards, you can't really, you know, get in trouble for cards. Because cards are cards. You have big up Moses. You know? So now, what I did with like Train, you know what I mean? Mm. The, the verses of Train is on, on this lonely afternoon see my love is coming soon the verses is if you don't know me by now you yeah. never, never. that's the verses for that and then as you know the thing you train to meet me is wait until i saw the sun don't know why i didn't come you know what i mean so for me with people coming up in the industry know these cards know these movements because then there's a standard here yeah, yeah. Sounds hit. yeah. Naturally, you know, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Without big money and stuff like that. If you keep constant knowing the, the standards, you know, if you do 100 songs, one of them must make some noise one day. You know what I mean? If it's not in this time, somebody might sample it later on. But most people don't know the standard that the human body prefers certain patterns. In yeah. Verse. Pre hook leads you to the hook. You know, revamp, <laughs> ultra, bridge. Because it don't make the song get boring. It's not there because, you know, some standard, I'm trying to break the standard. No, it's there because the human naturally does certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are certain chords that have certain stanzas. You know what I mean? Um, your love is my love, and my love is your love. Right? right? No! Yeah. Yes, I have wasted my time. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so there's these things that artists need to know. What are the standards? Because you can come and make your own rules, you know. But you're going yeah, to yeah. have to wait another 100 years for your rules to be instilled. And you might not get the results you want to get. So you want to study great. I study greats. And okay. how they did it. And what's their journey. But it doesn't make sense you force music onto yourself because you like it. It also has to choose you. It has mm. to choose you. Yeah. So it's something that, it's like a relationship. You know what I mean? I've seen mm. some guys with the money pay some girls to build them and then they get locked up. And some girls will wait on you to get locked up. But 90% not going to wait because they only got you for the money. You only have the money. That's really what it was. And they have convinced yeah. themselves that they love you too. Oh, I just love him, but it was just the money. It's the same with music. When you yeah. put the music out, you have a big budget behind it. When the money stops, the fans stop too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So people like Shade can always drop a greatest hits album and it does very well because people organically love Shade. You know what I mean? So again, that's my advice to people doing music. First, you want to make sure, am I any good at this thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Will I stick with this thing? If money don't work out, if things I can't mm. pay a bill, I can't think like that, you know what I mean? And there's also a music business, which I think is totally different from music. I think God yeah. makes music and some of God's creation make a business and they make it very hard to get into, mm. you know what I mean? And there's yeah. a, if you understand that, you will know what things cost. A PR, mm. a publicist, an attorney, they cost. And you can yes. bark up. You can barter all in ways if you want to, but eventually somebody wants this. And mm. they don't get it, 
When you get a record and you get a hit and get a sunny and the press is that man, I put this effort in you. Oh, you robbed me. But they did something. They stayed up yes. at night. They made calls for you. They got you the interviews with DJ Cat. You know what I mean? So yes. it's something where you have to understand that if you know, if you understand life, life mm. is something where you must give back to the river. You know yes. what I mean? So how do you give back to the source? Up will help you. If you don't mm. have money, you have to figure a way. Cook some food for them. Something. Yes. Get yeah. some, some drop them kids to school because it's something where a lot of people don't know that these laws exist and they get spooked out about mm. oh, oh they have this and they he look me this and you know I mean all that stupid stuff and the thing is they just don't understand that there's rules to the thing yeah you know what I mean so again understand the rules understand the copyrights you know what I mean before again before you even put out anything those are the, the things that you wanna have in place that you don't yeah. drop and then you can put music business out the way to you know, and play, mm. play guitars in the train can go to the hospital and sing for old people you know, you know what I mean? they'll love you too if it's mm. business, what you really really want to do but i know most people want the business of it 90 percent mm. of people that get involved get involved because they want to get the results from it so because you want the results from it you have to study the, yeah. the, the codes you know what I mean? of how do you become successful at this I remember there was times when I would make reviews of people and then I'm still broke. And they are still broke. <laughs> I was like, oh. who distributed this? You know, there's a hope for them to get a thing to and we sign a contract on her. So look at the contract. The contract is no good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the mm. thing is, we didn't pay an attorney to look it over. And the chances are, if you get an attorney for free, is a person that maybe uh, is not as good as the attorney that the company is paying because they, yeah. they overlook some details, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had an attorney, I had an attorney, it's a story for people coming up in the business. I had an attorney that I have that he worked for a firm, but he was like a little small attorney at the firm. And okay. He made me sign a contract and the contract says, the contract was supposed to say, I'm somebody supposed to get 10% from me for bringing uh, a finance fee for artists. So I give them 10% of the money that I receive and I'm supposed to give them 10% yeah. of the song. So the contract comes back as such and such must receive 10% of publisher's share. That guy started to claim 10% of the entire song. Wow. It's supposed to say 10% of John FX's share because it's me and him have the agreement. You know what I mean? Little, little detail like this. And this little attorney guy didn't See it and you know he, he basically stopped talking to me because he's so embarrassed you know what i mean mm, i was a yeah. big son you know what i mean so it's little things like that where you know sometimes you don't really want the free thing either you want to mm. compensate the thing and then music um again if you love it that much treat it i would tell people to get in the music business treat it like a bill a cell phone yeah bill, or an insurance put down a little two Hundred dollars a month, you little three hundred dollars a month. You big up the right game, kid. You know yeah. what I mean? You know what I mean? Put your little two hundred dollars and your three hundred dollars down, and put little by little together because the music business has a cost on it. Because yeah. when, it does, when it does well, it does pay you back when mm -hmm. you do well in it. So there's a price there for the music business, and I wouldn't tell you, oh, it's free, and they don't know. Um, they they, they come with this. Payola thing, no, and blah blah. This is not no, it's always existed. Everybody that yeah. we know from back in the day, I, I have a story about Motown that Motown had Mary Wells, Tommy mm -hmm. Terrell, Eddie Kendricks, David Ruffin. You know, what I mean, yo, big up Ragging King. We yeah. have all these people in the business, but then we only remember Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross, yeah. Marvin Gaye. Because yeah. Barry Gordy only moved to, move to, to to California with those people. You know what I mean? Yeah. He moved there with them because he could better deal. David Ruffin was a little difficult to deal with. And he basically, that's who he invested in. And it's not that they yeah. were more talented than anybody. It's just that they were easier to work with. So we remember them to this day. And that proves mm. to me, I mean, Peter Touch Bob Marley. Peter Touch, super talented. But, you know. Yeah. He was a little bit not so easy to deal with. Bob was a, had a good relationship with Chris and they had it for a while. And it, I could see 
where Chris made some efforts to play overdubs and his stuff, mm. get, get it mixed at Abbey Road Studio. So his stuff sound better sonically. You know what I mean? Yeah. When the sound sound better sonically. You could play it a million times without your ears becoming fatigued. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. I make movie scores, right? Mm. Okay. Do movie scores okay. I do commercials. When, mm. one, of the, one of the things when they'll choose your song for movies for a commercial is because the song has to be able to play a thousand times to all yeah. and stuff like that. So you would rarely hear digital songs as commercial. You hear like, dum, 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 dum. come to Kmart, yeah. blah, blah, blah. JC Penny, doing it right. Mm. And you hear a guitar or whistle going on in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they, the, the musicologists, remember, we in reggae don't have. I don't think we have any musicologists. You know what I mean? The musicologists that know these things know that the sounds have to be able. We're going to invest money and millions and thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because we're doing this kind of thing, we want to make sure that it wins. So they're careful with the dynamic of the sound. They're careful with the mixing. They're careful with just the, the whole movement of the song is this gonna grab will people get tired of it you know what i mean so yeah when we create i tell a young upcoming person can your song last a hundred years mm. you know what i mean a lot of the tracks i hear you know they're three month songs you know yeah. three months. and not just reggae a lot of the hip-hop that people will go and say oh this is running the place now it still can't touch a taylor swift record you know, it can't touch a labyrinth record. So it's a thing where I would tell you also be mindful of who you admire it. <laughs> you know, because mm. yeah, I, um, you know, my therapy album, Riding King, look out for it. Nice album, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the thing is, they um, these are the things that we have to be careful of to know that we're aiming for such a low aim. You don't, I don't aim for low genres. There mm. are the big, big genres, the bigger genres that the world love, that the world yeah. can use, that is healing to mm. you and the healing to your body. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's I call it music that you can use. I go to the gym yeah. and I'm really easy to hear records. People using it to do the thing. You know what I mean? I, I mix spa music to write oh. the spa yeah. thing. And I give them to spots. So just mm. these things of people that rub their back and they rub their face and spa music. Yeah. Um, I make music that I love, but mm. I also love when people love it. You know? Yeah. It's a better feeling. So when I thought of the vintage reggae album, two songs on the album are um, in a movie coming up that's going to be premiered at Cannes. Film festival. I can't mention the movie because it's still in choosing school. That's a big, big, big movie. Uh, Work It Out and Rude Boy are in the movie coming out soon. Nice. And when I was making that album, the Vintage Reggae album, I was watching Rockers. I must have been yeah. watching Rockers. I was watching Hard okay. Come and I was watching Countryman too. Yeah. That's kind of nice. like the feel of what I was thinking of. Like, I want these songs also to be used by people who can use them and who would like them, utilize yeah. them. Not just me expressing how I want to feel, you know what I mean? Because a lot of artists would say, oh, I'm being real to who I am. But are you sure that being real to who you are, a million people are going to really be interested in who you are? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is where I see the modern day artists are very opinionated about political mm -hmm. things and things like that. I rarely hear Reba McIntyre and Billy Joe talk about their political beliefs and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. They're just doing music. Sometimes yeah. I've seen people start to talk and they start to lose their fan base. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is people would prefer if you sing. This week, there's about, about three young ladies that I know who have come in contact with some big reggae artists that we know. Yeah. And when they meet them, it says, oh, I love this person's music, I, but they turn me off when I finally meet them, you know what I mean? Because the personalities suck, yeah. you know? And um, it's that to me is like opinion, you know what I mean? Me coming here on this platform 
Yo, DJ Cat. Yo, white free. Big woman thing. Hear me, I say. I mean, I'm just an effect. And I mean, I yeah. mm. A lot of the people would just exit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, yep. That is not a personality that you are being real to what you are, but some of it is ignorance. You know mm. what I mean? Because yeah. you're real to just your little community. That's not really being real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of artists that I know, their community, they're like the hope for people. Mm. But they still want to be real to the streets. But their street friends is hoping for them to make it. So they yeah. all can find the Grammys together or something like that. You know what I mean? So you yeah. have to also adjust that thing. You know what I mean? Me in this pink suit, I can't go to the domino table once I'm brushing them like this every day. And I say, yo, oh, thanks. Yeah. Yo, dog, if we are slippers and socks on my time, then we're a loudie, man. <laughs> you know, so the thing is, I have decided that I, I don't really need that acceptance of yeah. that kind of crowd. Um, there's a code that I've seen over the years in all genres. Whenever sometimes the street, street radio, especially in reggae, it's a code yeah. that chances are you're not going to have an international impact. The streets don't rate Jimmy Cliff to this day. I don't see a Jimmy Cliff museum. Jimmy Cliff is our first movie star. He's still alive. Figure up Jimmy Cliff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I admire him. I admire Bob yeah. Marley. Bob Marley was, if you ask any Jamaican back in the 70s who Bob was, they're going to tell you the truth. And I said, honestly, Dennis Gordon and Gregor I just said, I run the place them time, you know, for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bob was like a maxi priest, like a little yeah. brown man uptown. Yeah, like for real. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Cause he hung out with um, Alan Skillcode, big footballer. That's his, his hanging out to him. Girlfriend is Miss World. It's a yeah. street guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. And then he come from country too. Mm. He come from, from country and then he live in Trenchtown for a minute. But then, yeah. what I've learned, when you don't really grow up in the era, like you didn't born in the era, yeah. they'll, shoot yeah. at, they'll shoot at you eventually. Mm. But they're not going to do it to certain people. It's a tricky little thing, you know what I mean? They're not going to do yeah. it to certain people. If you don't really grow up. Like if me, you know, I live in Portmore, but I'm in yeah. Waterhouse every day. Okay. If me decide yeah. to make a run in Waterhouse one day, I'll do it for like a year or two, three. You know, so after a while, somebody's going to say, that's what I'm going to really originally come from around here still. Yeah. Mm. It happens. Yeah. So it's almost like, yeah. it don't make any sense to aim for acceptance from a certain kind of demographic it will really yeah. destroy you at the end of the day you know yeah. what I mean? so that's mm -hmm. one of my things the people coming in the business understand the business there is the the the, 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 the masters of the business that i know they're always yeah. doing a course they're always mm -hmm. doing some course yesterday soundcloud was yeah. the standard pandora was the only streaming thing before iTunes even made Apple. I remember Pandora yeah. was the only place. And then today, I would tell people, do brush up courses. How does mm -hmm. TikTok algorithm work? I've seen TikTok break records organically with no one yeah. um, Bamba. Um, mm -hmm. If you look at my page, you see his single, his new single, I produce it, the new, new, new single. But okay. we... We made, the song was viral yeah. on a TikTok. Yeah. And then I had to show him, so they took it down, because it's a sample. Oh, me there, me there. I had to clear the sample. So we kind of got yeah. out of the way, and then I showed him something that you need to have on the song, for the song to translate into streaming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of our songs are not translating, not getting out of TikTok and going there. So you have to also be educating yourself. What's the new thing? AI is coming out. Um, mm. I don't fight new things. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm supposed to be on this platform telling you that, oh, the music now not good like the music before. You ready for this? My father thought the music of the 80s was utter rubbish. My dad was born in the 40s. So my father, yeah. there's one day called the aces and things like that. He thought Zungo Zungo Zeng was foolishness. My dad. Mm. So you remember, artists in the 80s thought that. Yeah. that Elephant man, them and scared them because they thought that was garbage, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then elephant man, them thought that 
saying be my this new thing and uh, really kill up they thought that's garbage too. So each stage that come by, you're like, oh yes. these mongo rappers coming in now. But in your time, you were kind of example. Um hip hop started yeah. out with this big record, Sugar Hill Girl. If you have you don't stop, but then rock it up. That's chic Neil yes. Rogers record without the rhythms in it, right? Neil Rogers yes. did not like that rendition of his beat. He didn't like it. Yes. That became a precursor yes. for hip hop. So, what I've done now, um, Again, meet an extension. It changed it for me. Cause when I heard this song at first, I was like, "Oh my God, this is not emo trap. <laughs> oh, this is not my thing." But then, yeah, I started to get into the genre, the ski mask kind of thing, and I recognize that they have a story that they're telling too. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let me allow them to tell the story. Let me make sure it's at least mixed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can really tell it to the ear. Some songs yeah. go eight times platinum, and all I did was just make sure the knobs. I didn't even make the beat. It's a beat you took off YouTube. <laughs> you know? yeah. So it's it's those things where you can't arrive in 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 life. Period. Music, yeah, I'm sure you can't arrive. It's always some no, there's mixing. No, right now called Dolby Atmos. Yeah, I feel like the mix is coming kind of the Jamaica. No Dolby Atmos mix. No. Apple digital mastering as a whole different thing, and it's not a standard. Everything on the top 10 of the chart is Dolby Atmos, you know what I mean? When I got yeah. a guy telling me that he mixed and master, I'm like, ah, <laughs> do you have a mastering lab? <laughs> no, man, I'm the plug in, yeah. the man, I'm the plug, see a plug in like the man. And then, um, there's a place called Serving Sound, the mastering lab, and um, they have like the Manly Slam, that, that alone is like $80,000. That's just one plugin. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, I understand we maybe we don't have the money to do certain things. Mm. But again, knowing because the man in Islam is now in the UAD yeah. as a yeah. DSD. And the tapes are in the UAD also too. And it's closely matched to mm. the ones because the, the company when they do the reviews of it, they'll review it with Grammy people and stuff and they'll be like, it's close. It's not the exact thing, but it's close. So they call it yeah. mixing in the box now. And some people mm. still master in the box. You know, a, lot of, a lot of big engineers that I know, it was a, a task for them to convert mm. from the analog here to go in the box. And yeah. just, and like, yeah. so, so it's brushing up. You know what I mean? And saying my engineer, you know, Jimmy Douglas, you know I mean, a couple of grams as well. You know what I mean? And yeah. Marcia, Marcia was just on the thing that she's not a big, big top, top grammy engineer. And they remember what Jimmy said to me that he had to adjust to the Dolby Atmos now because it's a changing industry. Yeah. Youngsters come yeah. in and it's a changing sound. So you can't be locked in to what you believe or into what you think you like. You know what I mean? Because you never know what you're going to like. It's like tasting new food. Yeah, this yeah. is an acquired taste, but I like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's a thing like that with music where I'm constantly a student. My brother calls himself a life student. And my brother, I admire him a lot, you know? So yeah, I also, yeah. um, call myself a student of life, positive. So I'm putting out some more music. Um, oh, not a key, key thing. Um, I've decided to use the internet as my hard drive. That's okay. my opinion now of music. Okay. Because even if you don't have the money to shoot the video, and the money for this, and the thing like that, you still want the people to, to hear the music. Get yeah. into the habit of just wanting to be discovered for the fun of it. Not, mm. you know, I mean, it, it hurt me for a while when I had a record, records that would like, like live on the internet and not get any knowing. Nobody knew it. Like before the retro dance all that I did, people don't know where they exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. I spoke to a few people who got their vintage reggae and big up Zion because she's, I was almost like, okay, I'm done with this project. Yo, big up Blacks. Cousin, you know, Andrew, you know yeah. what I mean? And of fact, that cousin right there, walked yeah. out the church, that I think they live across the church, right? It's the same door. Oh, okay. Speak <laughs> up, Andrew, Blacks. So the thing is, um, 
what I recognize is the you, you you have to also understand that you're adjusting yourself to this changing industry and this changing business. You know what I mean? Because I I I I I use I don't have sometimes you don't have money to break a record because it costs a certain amount. So I decided that I'm gonna start using the internet as my hard drive. Everything going on here. My traps and yes. things. Get it, copyright it, do all mm. stuff, and leave it up there. You know what I mean? Yes. Because then we can be frustrated. I've met so many talented people, and what holds mm. them back is this thing. You know what I mean? Oh, I gotta shoot the video. I don't got the money for it. I got a nine to five other job. But I'm like, um, Sia, that does Rihanna stuff. She was an artist before. And she just yeah. died that time passed and she like in her fifties and she didn't think that she looked as good anymore. She's like, I'm gonna be a writer. But then when I checked out her albums that she had that she released through C D Baby, I was like, Wow, yeah. these things are really, really good. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it is two thousand sixteen I made that decision. I released two mm. hundred readings that I had. I got them hip hop volume one, regular volume two, and then put them up there. And yeah. I've seen some of them getting some traction on TikTok, you know, there's a track I made called Borat, you know, dun, 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 no voice, you know, and yeah. I just yeah. dance into it on TikTok, and the track was, I released in 2016, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. 2016 was yeah. also a tough time for me, it was a reset, okay. you know what I mean, and family and stuff, it was a tough year, and I was just like, I was, I was, I'm like, I was going to give up on music, yo, big up to Beastly Cole, that's a big producer there too. He produced yeah. a lot of people, um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the thing is, um, Keisha, I see it. So, you know what I mean? When I seen that, the I was going to give up on it, you know what I mean? And I said, I'm going to throw everything up on the internet. And I decided, yeah. no. That the Vintage Reggae album, whether it does anything at all, I'm just so yeah. happy that it's there. It's there. Mm. So when somebody asks me, like people say, oh, what's happening to Reggae now? Normally, I'll play that from my hard drive or something like that from my hard drive. Like, why don't we release yeah. it? You know what I mean? So now, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's out. If you have YouTube, yeah. on YouTube, so you can enjoy and share it. And, you know, FX have some stuff too, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I believe in using the internet as my hard drive now. I hear that. 100%. You know, you know what I mean? So that's the opinion. I am just didn't want to interrupt this vintage reggae to do mm. what it's going to do. I want yeah. to get it full time. Also, another thing, key, 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 key. In our Caribbean music, our Caribbean music yeah. is third world music. Mm -hmm. Third world music don't go as big as all these commercial music. Every third world record that I know takes at least 50 something weeks for it to mm -hmm. even break the mold. Nobody knows yeah. you know? Cranium, 57 weeks exactly. Egyptian, Volio, 62 weeks. That's a year plus. Yeah. You want, the you want to chill with the big boys? Like yeah. 68 weeks. That's a year. And yeah. Right, so a lot of people, I, I've i gotten into a little friction with a club, clubhouse groups. A lot of very big reggae artists that says you need to drop a bunch of songs to trigger the Spotify algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get that from? And yeah. In particular, a guy, his record, his big record, took about a year and a half. And I'm, mm. But he don't know what his marketing and his management team did, because most artists fall out with their people after all, because the ego kicking. Yeah. You had somebody that was turning the wheels in the back that didn't yeah. see. So what happens is the music does take some time without a budget. It takes a while to walk. To get to the ears when you're tired of it like i'm not tired, mm. tired of vintage reggae album but i yeah. wanted to i would i would want to release something no just to, for myself yeah. but there's people just tasting it now no. mm. i was talking to g cole yesterday they interviewed g cole um there in uh, south florida and g cole um he said he had that on th thursday he's only listening to it. he's been listening to it Every day up yes. until yesterday, I still listen to it now. So you yes. just got it, but I released it what four months ago, February sixth. Mm. You know, so mm. the thing is, you have to give the music time for it to grow, and without yes. a budget, that's all you have. Because mm. I know that you don't have the money and things.
Yes. You know what I mean? Big up the chin, my high school friend. Yes, yeah, man. So Thank it's you, something that you have to keep at in mind. Yeah, yes. definitely. So you know what? We're coming to the last little bit of the interview, but what would you like to say to your fans and the listeners and the people that support you? Nah, never know some of fans. But I know these people that support me. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, my, my, I, I try to keep you guys proud of me, you know what I mean? And I don't try to get into too much internet stupid things. And yeah. I will try my best, because all we have to do in this world is try. You know what I mean? Yeah. I shine, I dig up. And I just decide that I have to just keep doing that. And I will, I take suggestions too. You say, hey, I think yeah. you should make a track and everything like that. And I live my life, people that support me, and even fans, I have them off in my brain, like my parents, like my mama and stuff. Yeah. You know I mean? And the community that I come from, I don't really want to let them down, you know? Yeah. In any kind of way. Yeah. So my thing, I can't please everybody either. But yeah, um, I try my best to do that. So I thank you guys for the support. Keep supporting, keep supporting the music because supporting, it supports us. You know yeah. I mean? Not just um, me and, and, and something like that. It supports all of our, our communities because again i see afrobeat as a part of us if you yes. talk to any afrobeat person they'll tell you how much reggae had an impact on them over the years mm -hmm. any one of them so some of them feel a little hurt when we come yeah. out saying you know, afrobeat taking anything i'm not taking anything we're just doing the thing mira makiba fella kuti is there bob marley and theater they set this this thing for them already yeah. I'm so the thing is, that's my thing for the fans. Thank you so much for supporting. Keep supporting real music and good and bad music. It's all from the Almighty. I don't consider nothing good or bad. It's just relative. Yeah. Depends <laughs> on the time that you're in. Yeah. And, and the reason why I say that too, um, on this earth, there's a time when you're doing a deal with a man, mm. you would spit on it. Yeah. You Spit on your hand and shake a man and now you're four people from us and that's you violate me. <laughs> so yeah. the thing is, I don't really consider when I did God session with my boyfriend and then some people tell me that the song is a devil song, right? Mm. And, and I was like, huh? A church will come from you know. So yeah. somebody from the church called me and said, Ah, oh, don't you hear what that guy said? You wrote it, Jesus. Christ, me have 24 disciples. Run go in the church and let me shoot you in the parson. Mm. I was like, oh, mm. he did say that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. the thing is, it's still a part of an expression. Of, yeah. You know what I mean? And why I couldn't fight the song? Because the first time somebody ever called my name in a song. Mm. I mean, so I have a big up, obsession for keeping that. Because I told him to take my name out of it. I'm saying, yeah. nah, 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 I'm leaving it. And I'm glad that he did. That's the first, it's, like, was a, it's like a key, like a door opener. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I give thanks for that. So that's why I will work with certain songs. There's certain songs that are really, like, the message is really, really bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I still wouldn't tell you to, oh, don't put that up. But I will tell you, even it out with something yeah. good. So my thing, when the um, government decided to ban the songs in Jamaica, right? My yeah. adjustment to that would to say, it's not that we don't like you guys. Is does are you capable of making other songs other than mm -hmm. "Gyal Gone" and things like that? "Gyal Gone," yeah. "Badness," "Mr. Friend," or something like that, scamming. So I yeah. call it. We're doing a control on the three Gs. Gal gun gun, yeah. you know what I mean? Or 5G, you know what I mean? I make yeah. more. And give us, I challenge you as young artists, give me some other songs. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I would, or I would say yeah. really, on, on the thing, because it's, it's, in the days, people used to write about so many things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Even Cartel and Big Bling Dog. Cartel, you know, I said, the police have a, a roadblock over Idle Primary, where they're telling a story. You know mm. what I mean? Of them yeah. driving on the road. So I'm like, what? People don't do that anymore. It's just, you know, Mr. Friend, I'm going shopping with that, for some energy, and if you have some girl, anything else you can write about. So mm. there's so much more topics to write about. Green guitar. Me and my green yeah. guitar. 
There's so much things to write about. Yeah. So, um, that's the Vintage Reggae album has a song on it called Root to Your Parents. Yeah. Right? I yeah. don't know if you know that there's a drink in Jamaica called Root to Your Parents back in the 50s. A lot of people don't know that they, that exists. Even elders back then don't remember. Dirk Morgan had an interview where he's talking about yeah. it. Um, mm. The drink has dry ice in it, right? Okay. So yeah. The drink has like smoke coming from it, but there is a rum in it. You can Google it on the, on, the Google, on the internet and you see it. So every time you drink that drink, it makes your life go crazy and make your root appearance and cuss up somebody. With. So that's why I say yeah. this song. So you say that you're at Gala Road and you want to have fun, but you're drinking root appearance, you know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. it's a topic that I knew people wrote songs like that back then. So I was just using that style to write. Today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it don't have to be um, writing about the Lamborghini or, or you hate haters them, some invisible haters that you hate you, you created in your mind. Yeah. So this goes out to the haters yeah. them. Oh, you know, like, you know, some of us write one day. Yeah. Write some other songs. But guess yeah. what? The world that you want to love your music, I would call it, let's call it the white world. Some of the stuff mm. they still can't relate to. You know what I mean? They love your stuff. It's like, you know, he has a good record and stuff, but they can't use the record. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. not, they have an impression. The world comes to Jamaica for some specific things. They come mm. for the sea, they come for the land, and they come for the food and things like that. They know that hard life is there now, but they're really not yeah. interested in a bleach out face thing. I you know, you said, I rough, and I give you, and I don't know. It's almost like, you're like, okay, that's heavy. When they come back from yeah. America, you know, they have to send your Western Union and this. When they come back to the UK, if you have to send your money and everything, and just, you're trying to help this hard life thing. And you're making this hard life music. What if you make a song, I land in the sun, I come jamming it tonight. You know, Jamaica feel all right. You know what I mean? Make a lot of yeah. song. You know what I mean? <laughs> but even if you do the gangster song them and the stuff them, you have to make some things that are more palatable. For yeah. the world. You can't stuck in the ignorant. No, I'm not. I'm not be real to my thing. You know, not to well, you're going to be real to being maybe broke. Or yes. always wondering why you never get a nomination here, or a platinum plaque there. Because yeah. then it's still not, not the, the people can't park. You cannot use it. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Many, many so, times I hear people send me songs. I'm like, this is the same song. No, my thing is different. I was like, no, man, the same song. Trust me. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's something where you'd have to put that a little ego, a little arrogance. You're telling you, you're yeah. tell, telling your story that you're telling, but you also want to know that you have a world of people that they're expecting, or I don't expect like a jelly man to greet at the airport. One little yeah. Irish, a jelly, a drink, man. You know what I mean? And they also already have depressing music. You already have a bunch of the hip hop and you have mm. the emo stuff which is a yeah. bit dark. You know, it's like UK, you know, you have um I remember you used to have garage and you have a lot of little, little things, you know what I mean? Um yeah. you have the the the, 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 gr the grind over there too. The drill and it's almost like we have that already. We don't mm. touch that, you know what I mean? How you want people to feel when they listen to your music. Yeah. Like people don't want to feel bad every day, you know. What I mean? For real. Um, yeah. Reggae had this ability where um, college kids received it over the years, and it was almost like a chill vibe. All college kids mm. across the world. It was they have a Bob Marley poster in your room, and they smoke the weed and they do that. It's a chill thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was almost like what Kurt Cobain had with the grunge. Never, you know what I mean? And that kind of thing, you know? So it was a movement. Yeah. And first, remember, even hip hop, reggae, the world don't understand what you're saying, you know? It's the mm. melodies, it what grabbed them. Example. Um, um, yeah, say, boy, no, say, I'm an star. No, 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 say, boy. Our, our, our everyone falls in love sometimes. And the verse comes in, beep, beep, see about the key to the G. I mean, for the for me. They don't know what that guy's saying. You know? Only a few words <laughs> pick up, but they wait for the chorus to come up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, something where your entire song is not understandable. 
Yeah. Well, Afro yeah. beats, nobody don't know what them are saying either. But the melody, them sweet. If I say, yeah. I love you, I say all the English, you know. I'm on him, 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 i am on him 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 i am i am on him 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 i am there's no signature in the beat, you know what I mean? There's no, um, this beat stands out. Like you hear a, um, you hear a record like a, um, uh, Jamaica, we had that too. Oh, 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 it's these signatures, even in production, I'm talking to the producers now, where you can't just take this just loop and this loop going on. You don't have no signature in the track, you know what I mean? Mm. And you don't have none of them things that are going on. So it's, do you expect this to last? Can you put this up against a chic record? Or a Michael Jackson yeah. record? It's being real, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, if, you, if you step out of your ego and just mm. look at it for a minute, you know what I mean? It's like, do you see this last in the test? Of Can you play this for your mom? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I did the shoot your song, Sid La Agro, this is for this in the shoot you. There's this evangelist from a mother church. She says, I listened to your album, you know, and um, the shoot you, the record there, I don't know what he's saying, but I like the beat. Mm. Yeah. He goes, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. This you put this in the This that's what he said. But the lady yeah. the church, she just love it. You know what I mean? I even Camille, Camille, um, um, that um, Camille dance on USA. Camille said to me yeah. that her mom loved the rhythm. And Camille mom <laughs> is like a diplomat. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I recognize that this thing still exists. Melody still exists. People still want to hear it. We don't care what yeah. time we're living in. Yeah. Oh, good music is dying. Mm, yeah, it's still there. You know what I mean? I, I find they're just not popular. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're just not. For real. But it's there. It's it. Yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. But well, you know what, John FX, it's been a blessing to speak with you, get to know you, Thank you. and just speak with you and understand the knowledge that you've gone through as a producer and as an artist. It's a blessing, for real. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this platform, you know what I mean, and continue to okay. unite the people with this thing that you have. And I'll always try to make sure I make music that you can have and you can also, you know what I mean, enjoy and get yep. it to the people and get it out to the world. Because a new right. time that we live in, it's not a sad, depressing thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You talk to the people back when communism was a thing. They thought that was going to be the end of the world, the Cold War. Now they end up nothing. Their mind is still covered in place. And yeah. when everything gets rough, all we have left is music. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. So, big yeah. Up. Yeah. so before, before you go, people want to know how they can reach you, how they can find you. Let them know okay. how they can do that. So everywhere is Danifix, as here, Danifix. I have an email link there on the Instagram. And you can just email me. I, I it, it comes to me right now. Answer it. Um, yeah. I did. It's sending me music. A lot of people send me music, and it's not music. It's what I'm interested in. Um, my children do music. My wife do music. It is. I want to figure out what's your plan. You know what I mean? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 that's what I'm interested in because I, we can make anything hit. You know what I mean? So the question is, I want to figure out. What's the plan? How are we planning to do this? Is there it's John FX at gmail dot com? That's the email that's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And are the next one that you see the Mr. John FX at gmail dot com. And the thing is, my question is is there an investor? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have to be an investor? You know what I mean? These are the questions that I have. Because it's not mm. just Oh, I have some good music and stuff. My, my whole hard drive is full of good music. Mm -hmm. And everybody I know in my phone are amazing artists. You know what I mean? So it's not yeah. more music. You know what I mean? And then we have to get out of the ego and this belief that, that, oh, 
Yo, big up to Stunt Man. That's yeah. the guy that said, I yeah. like to move it, move it, a legend right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, the man. thing is, um, the, we have to understand that there's also a business. Mm. And that's what get the music out there. So, yeah. are we going to use that part of it to, to think that, oh, when they hear my stuff, it's going to be big. Everybody <laughs> thinks that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not really how it goes, you know what I mean? Because you want at least a million people to receive it and yeah. also like it. And how do you get the million people to get it? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the question. Some people have a blast. Big respect, bro, sir. Some people have a blast. Some people have a thing. And they have a price on it. They have an email with 10,000 contacts in it. And if they do it for you for free, check this out. You have a radio yeah. bridge. Your bridge you play on radio. He can't yeah. possibly, for your, he can play a song one time, two times, three times. In order for the song to go viral, he has to be playing that song for at least a thousand times. You yeah. would, your friend lose his job if he ever do that. This program yeah. director is going to be like, hey, uh, is this a budget? What, what is this? You know, I can't keep playing this record. Even if you like it. Yeah. So you have to also remember that that part does exist. You know what I mean? So life of these, these prices that yeah. I like to pay them. I love to pay. Mm. Tell me how much it is. If I can't pay it, I will save my money and pay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because what I don't want is... You shouldn't want also for somebody to do you a favor. And then you become yeah. big later on and then they come back. Remember, I was the one who put you on years ago. You know, you don't want that. Yeah. It's, it's so hard <laughs> to pay back that. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Interest in crew and stuff like that. After a while, you're big up to embrace. You know? Yeah. So the thing is, I want to know how the radio campaign, how much that costs. Yeah. The PR and the, and, the, and the thing these things are sometimes not supposed to cost that, that's what yeah. they say but ads have to be paid for and so have to be paid for so for radio they say ads is what keep radio going right yeah so are you aware that you can buy commercial ad time for radio yeah, yeah do that <laughs> <Stop you. laughs> you're buying commercial ad time but it's your song play you know what I mean? Yeah. No radio not going to reject that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I do parties for big radio, you know, live this weekend, we got Egyptian, blah, 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 blah. We got to pay for that. For yeah. Artists. So instead of that, we can do, you're right, now we got a new record coming up, blah, 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 and the record play. You know, go check it out, 30 seconds of it. Go yeah. check it out, and blah, blah. It's commercial, go pay for it. That's a secret yeah. I just gave you guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what they just do, by the way. But I'm never going to say that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, so that's the trick yeah. so keep it moving and we keep one love same way and Everybody. it's always love music please man yeah. yes thank you for having me but again anytime you're always welcome it's been a blessing to like i said to speak with you get to know you a little bit more mm -hmm. and just hear your journey it's been everybody's been loving it as well so it's always a blessing oh, give thanks give thanks yeah well. yeah Every time. Right. So any final any final words you want to say to the people out there before we go? Love. Yeah man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah man. All right, sis. Thank you so much. Bless up. Blessings. Bless up. More love. Program and take care. All right. You too. More love. Yeah. Bless Thanks. Yeah. Bless. Bless. Yeah.